I'm Jill Constantine and welcome to this week's edition of Community College News. News for all six MBCC campuses. Today we have a November theme with Remembrance Day and Movember and how people could be affected by a possible change to minimum wage. But first, we were poppies to remember their sacrifices. But as Jocelyn Turner discovers, there are some subtle rules of etiquette that come with wearing a poppy. Poppies are over our hats, lapels, and even over our hearts. But there are some specific places we should wear them. I, I don't think it's right to have it on your hat. My, my husband's a vet, so no, they should wear it where they're supposed to wear it. But I do see people wearing them on the lapels, mm -hmm. but, and I've seen people wearing it on the hats, but I don't know. I think the etiquette is that you wear it over your heart. Ken Newman, the president of the Royal Canadian Legion Branch 11, says there are a few rules the members of the Legion follow when wearing a poppy. That would be the last Friday of uh, October. This um, year it would have been the 28th of October. And you, wear, you can wear your poppy right up to um, the end of November 11th that night. Newman says Legion members always place the poppy over the heart. They do not wear a pin, even a Canadian flag, in the center of the poppy. A lot of people, they'll put a pin through the poppy. Actually, this is, in a, in a sense, defacing it. But if they're going to do that, we encourage Legionnaires not to do it. But if the public's going to wear it, we can't very well stop them. But if they do put a pin through it, it would be best if they put the Canadian flag. Proper poppy etiquette is also spelled out in the Legion bylaws. We wear the poppy as it's made. Um, it's, it's a symbol of peace and remembrance for the war veterans. So we really don't want to dishonor that. Newman says Legion members and veterans also wear the poppy at veterans' funerals. They also leave their poppies on the wreaths during the Remembrance Day ceremony to show respect for the fallen. In Woodstock, Jocelyn Turner, Community College News. This Friday, Remembrance Day ceremonies will be held throughout the province. There will be two in Miramichi. One at James M. Hill Memorial High School begins at 10.30 and proceeds to the Royal Canadian Legion Branch No. 3. The second begins at the Civic Centre at 10.40 and continues on to Legion Branch No. 10. There will be refreshments and live entertainment. Moncton also has two events. The first begins at 10.15 at the Moncton Coliseum. Reception follows at Legion Branch No. 6. The other ceremony forms at 10.30 at Massey Avenue Cenotaph. St. John is holding three Remembrance Day ceremonies. People are asked to be at Harbor Station by 10.30. Another gathering begins at 10.15 at St. Rose and Barnhill Schools and proceeds to the Cenotaph on Manawaganish Road. At the Cenotaph on Ludlow Street, the ceremony starts at 10.45. In Fredericton, the ceremony begins at 10.15 at the library and proceeds to the Cenotaph on King Street. The Woodstock Remembrance Day ceremony begins at 10.45 with a procession from the Armory to the Cenotaph on Main Street. There will be a dinner at 2 p.m. at the Legion Branch No. 11. For St. Andrews, a service is being held at 9.30 at the St. Andrews Church, followed by a procession to the Cenotaph. Occupy protests continue this Remembrance Week in a number of New Brunswick cities. In Fredericton, organizers are preparing to face the upcoming cold weather. Behind that is our uh, our shelter. It's uh, made out of a tarpaulin that, uh, that we that we bought and uh, some other donated tarpaulins. And it's not exactly warm in there, but it keeps us uh, dry and uh, it's a bit of a windbreak. The protesters are planning to remain at their makeshift camps throughout the winter months. We're going to try and tough it out. Yeah. Occupy Fredericton has posted a wish list on their Facebook page asking for donations of parkas, battery packs, blankets and other items. You may notice more mustaches this month. November is being called Movember to increase cancer awareness. Ethan Hazlitt reports. It's Movember, which means more men are trimming their beards to make a unique mustache. The global movement is meant to raise awareness about prostate cancer. My grandfather passed away as a result of that, so um, yeah, so it's uh, yeah, I think it's a uh, a great thing to do. Whatever a person can do to bring awareness and and uh, help in a cause, that's great. Across the globe, men are growing out their stashes to raise awareness about the many cancers affecting men, particularly prostate cancer. According to a recent release by Stats Canada, over 37,000 Canadian men died of cancer in 2008. That's about half the population of St. John. 
People like Kyle Hempel have started their own teams and hope to raise awareness. It's a kind of a competition between me and my friend who can get the most money donated towards them. People rate their mustaches. Pictures are uploaded to Movember.com where people can vote on the best mustaches. They can also adopt a mustache and make donations. Hempel says that for some, raising awareness is not their goal. Most people just see it as a cause to grow a mustache, but there's actually people trying to raise money for the cause. So. Although some use Movember as just an excuse to grow a mustache, the root of the campaign is to raise awareness about prostate cancer. To learn more, you can go to Movember.com. In Woodstock, Ethan Hazlitt, Community College News. The rules for people who earn tips could result in earning less than minimum wage. Some restaurant and bar owners here in New Brunswick like the idea. Michael McDonald reports. Kristen Briggs stocks the fridge with her new business. She's concerned she might not be able to afford help. As a new business owner, wages are definitely one of the higher expenses that I have to deal with on a monthly basis. The government is examining the possibility of having servers earn less than minimum wage because they already earn tips. Briggs isn't convinced the change will be good for business. It would be better in a sense that there's going to be more money coming through the door and less wages going out. Bushaib Dawin owns a restaurant in Woodstock. He says the wage change is a boon for employers as well as employees. So that means that employee, if she's upset now, she'll be worse down the road because her employer is going to cut her hours. You can make $10 an hour, but I can't afford to give you 40 hours. It's going to be 20 hours. Dawin is against an increase of the minimum wage because he claims it doesn't benefit employees or employers. So who is the winner? Is the government. He's not the employee. Is not the employer because more money they make the employee more cut from their paycheck. To access the government survey on the issue, visit gnb.ca slash consultations. The online poll is open till mid-December. Business owners like Dao Win are hopeful the government will make the changes. They'd be following the lead of provinces like Ontario who've already made the cuts. In Woodstock, Michael McDonald, Community College News. Hundreds of New Brunswickers sampled the taste of Hollywood in the provincial capital during the Silver Wave Film Festival. It was an opportunity to showcase some of the best films produced locally and abroad. Our Martin Poirier was there for the weekend event. If you like movies, you don't need to travel to Hollywood to see who walks on the red carpet or what is behind the silver screen. The Charlotte's Art Centre in Fredericton is home to the New Brunswick Film Cooperative. This weekend, it is host of the 11th annual Silver Wave Film Festival. With everything from short films to documentaries, a slew of directors, producers, actors and actresses will be attending this year's event. Uh, great, I uh, love all the films. I've been here for the shorts yesterday and I watched uh, the shorts one and two. I went even for the midnight screening. So a good crowd too, so yeah, it's going pretty great. The festival started with a producer's reception where guests and industry leaders rub shoulders and talk showbiz while enjoying refreshments and food. The film festival, it's an honor to be here. I'm thrilled to be one of the local filmmakers, really. And I owe so much to the film co-op and the volunteer members. It's a blessing. This year's event showcased French and English screenings from Canada and the world. Anyone screening the films was given a ballot to vote in the Viewer's Choice Awards. Festival sponsors offered a series of awards and prizes for excellence ranging anywhere from music composition to cinematography. It's pure talent, like shine through and see everybody come together and make a beautiful piece of art. Screenings were also held at the saint Anne Recreation Centre. The auditorium was at full capacity with more than 400 people attending. It's very well done. It's my first time coming out, so it's really good. Pretty awesome. This is actually my first uh, day here. Yep. I didn't come yesterday or anything. And actually, this is my first time uh, being at the film festival. The three-day gala closed with a New Brunswick feature at the UNB campus and a party afterwards. Earlier this year, the Department of Wellness, Culture and Sport cancelled the New Brunswick tax credit. There are high hopes in the film community that the credit will once again be given a green light. The tax credit is critical to the independent New Brunswick filmmakers and to the industry. In Fredericton, Martin Poirier, New Brunswick Community College News. That's our show for today. 
To submit a story idea, email us at jschoolmvcc at gmail.com or to see more of our work, visit jschoolmvcc.ca. Thanks for watching.